I wouldn't be the person I am today if it wasn't for Native Women's, for real. Uh, Native Women's Resource Center, I'm looking at you. Okay, Native Women's Resource Center of Toronto has been around for over 26 years now. Uh, it started just down the street in a little basement office. And it really was a collective of Aboriginal women who uh, were in need of resources that they weren't finding. Um, so the programs are, there's emergency programs, so housing, so women come in who don't have shelter and need a shelter for the night, need transitional or supportive housing, long-term uh, housing, we have a housing program. The housing program at the Native Women's Resource Centre exists to tease apart the barriers that exist when Aboriginal women are looking for housing. So that could be barriers of coming from a reserve, that could be barriers of having really poor credit from racking up your cell phone bill when you were 17 years old. Just in the last year we've shifted operations around quite a bit. Um, there's more collaborations between programs uh, and then our volunteers have become a vital support for our center. So if you come to our center you'll notice, notice that it's volunteers that often do the cooking for our daily lunches. Um, and our volunteers come right out of the community. So these are Aboriginal women who want to give back or gain new skills. Uh, and so they're, they're basically unemployed uh, employees of the center. That's how we treat them. Um, and that's really been quite transformative for our centers, being able to work with the women where they're uh, participating in programs rather than just being recipients. I know that it isn't that bad. I can't complain because I, I, I think I have it good compared to some other people. Always got to remember there's someone worse off than you are, right? And there's also people who are better off than you are, but... Telling our stories, telling the true stories, you know? Because I'm finding out now that you know, the, the, we did a program there uh, a couple of months ago, uh, me and another Aboriginal woman and my daughter, she's on the PTA at school. Now, they had us come in, they wanted something Aboriginal, right? And so we did a component, a two-part component. We taught, we taught about the unity bracelet, what it means to us and what it resembles. We did a workshop with little girl, girls from grade three up to grade six. So we did that workshop. And in the second component, we did a workshop on storytelling. We talked about our medicines, what we use them for, and stuff like that. And some of the questions that these young people were coming up with, like, they have no idea about Native people. They only know from what is put in the textbooks, and that's it. Because I said, when you really think about it, when Christopher Columbus came, guess who was here first? The native people, in our textbooks, it says, no, Christopher Columbus discovered America, North America. Well, guess what? We were already here. How do you think he got fed and everything else <laughs> like that? You know, so even the textbooks are incorrect on educating people about Aboriginal people. <coughs> so uh, there's a place that's putting together a whole new book about Aboriginal culture and the stories and telling them about residential school, about the suffering and the pain that us people have been through, through through decades and decades and we're still trying to heal and we're nowhere near as close to it, you know? So we're telling them the truth and letting them know what's going into it? Yeah, you can put that in. Okay. And letting them know the truth. There's nothing wrong with the truth. The truth don't hurt nobody. You got money. The art? Oh, uh, one day when I was working here, I used to be the receptionist here and um, the teacher, so, so I just picked up a pencil and then I started sketching. So then I tried painting and then that was it. I took off from there. Yeah, but there are a lot of great programs here yeah. that um, help me in my life. Like I used to not be able to sit here in front of a camera and talk without crying or getting nervous or anything like that. But because of the programs that they have here, it's like um, they help me to find my voice. So now I speak my mind all the time and I let people know how I feel if I don't feel good and stuff like that. Where before I could not do that. So it was a long process, but yeah. And I also go to school here, but that's on hold temporarily because I'm working on the mural across the street. So yeah. Lots of great things in my life.